What's going on everybody? This is Fry. So today I'm actually going to be playing my first round uh, in this tournament that was created by the Discord server called Hero Pantheon. So a big shout out to all the organizers there who helped organize uh, this event. Uh, that was really an incredible amount of effort went into it. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to be matched up against a random opponent. We're already connected uh, in the game. We're about to play our first round right now. Uh, we've each banned two heroes. So I've banned uh, for him. He's not a allowed to play Infinity and Brainstorm, uh, which are, in my opinion, the strongest zombie heroes, and he's not allowed to play Solar Flare and Captain Combustible. He has banned uh, the Smash and Huge Giganticus slash Super Brains. Those two to go together as a package on the zombie side. Uh, he's also banned me from playing on the plant side. The two heroes he picked were uh, Chompzilla and uh, Wall Knight. So we're going to be playing our matches now. Uh, we did a coin flip. I got, I won the coin flip, so I get to decide to be plants or zombies first. Uh, apparently you're allowed to use the same zombie hero, even if you win with it, you can use it for your next zombie match, etc. So uh, I'm not really sure of that rule, but it looks like we're going to be able to repeat heroes. I have prepared um, an Infinity deck, Brainstorm. Uh, I've also prepared Rose and uh, Solar Flare and Captain Combustible on the other side, so we'll see uh, exactly what I need to um, use to beat this guy. Uh, I'm going to be starting off as zombies, I'm going to be starting off with an Infinity Pirate deck, a really typical Infinity Pirate deck. Uh, so I'm just going to challenge him with this right now. Uh, and we are going to get right into our first game. It is best of five. So the first person to win three games wins. This is his name right over here. Looks like he hasn't played PvC Heroes in a while because he's been reduced to rank one. Um, well, I guess that's it. <laughs> Looks like we're not going to have in-game sound today. Oh, now it is. Okay, I have my earphones plugged. Now it's going to work. All right. So I'm going to be tracking opponents. Um, he's playing Wall Knight. Let me tra I have a little cheat sheet. Maybe I'll tell you a little bit about that later. Uh, maybe I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, we want to start off fast against this guy. Is it worth it to keep Pogo Mug? I think I'm going to keep Pogo and actually look for a two drop here. So be it. This is our life now. See if we can get Infinity Clones on one, that would definitely help. Um, I'm going to spam this power. I don't really want to get hit on two, so I think I'm going to put this... Well, the Pogo is going to be good on heights later. Alright, I'll put this on the ground. Nice con man. Uh, I'm going to set up my cheat sheet here. For Wall Knight. I am just have a little sheet with all the cards and superpowers that each opponent has, so I can actually keep track. His powers, of course, are Protect, Bubble, Walnut, and Geyser. I haven't really prepared for this tournament at all. I'm sure I could have done well with a lot of preparation. We do have a Fruke Kixie Triceratops, which is nice. Uh, too bad I went with that. Um, question is, should I Gravestone this for a card? I don't think it's worth it. We have Pogo coming up. So we went well with Spikeweed Sector. Uh, so here we go, comment or flame face. It's gonna be flame face. He's played one spike weed. He plays spike weed there. Looks like he might have missed that one. Um, so we can either go with the double play or we can go with Pogo. I'm definitely going to go Pogo Mug here. Uh, too bad I didn't keep those environments in the starting hand. A lot of spike weed sectors could kind of drive this deck nuts. Uh, is he doing a heal deck? Okay. This deck should be a pretty good matchup against heal. He has to go a little buddy dry. I realize my recording's a bit choppy because um, I'm not connected via the USB cable. I'm connected via Wi-Fi, so we'll try to fix that after this game. I'm just on my computer here. Okay. Um, these these monkey pirates do look really interesting here. I could even go monkey. Well, hmm. The monkey pirates just to drain his block meter looks really interesting. I also could just go mug. We're probably going to proc his blow. We're probably going to proc his block this turn. We're probably actually only going to hit him twice. So I think I'm going to do this and then Monkey Pirate 
and then fruitcake and stuff later. Let's go, Muck. Higher amount of tempo. We have the removal kind of built in with the pogo. Don't want to risk pogo, you know, dying this turn. We also don't have an efficient play with like monkey monkey fruitcake. Here's a setup, man. He's setting up heals. This is actually pretty scary. I'm not, this is not a. This is very far from a done deal. I don't want to give him little buddy back in his hands. Believe how fast we can actually just rush him here. Looks like we're actually hitting him three times, so that's sad. Monkey Pirate's not getting value now. Man, I should have kept the environment. I didn't realize that heal is so strong. Uh, I'm going to go with Mug again, I suppose. Decent top deck. I'll probably just give the Pogo the cheese this next turn. We'll bounce the... Uh... He goes with Poppies. Not with the... Doesn't have Heart Choke, apparently. I should check my gravestones real quick. So these are both mugs. Uh, I'll go for the face damage. I think this pogo. I think the pogo is correct. To to gravestone this. This is as good of a. It means we can't make a play next turn. Uh, is this better? Is this better in terms of the amount of damage it does next turn? Uh, I guess, well, we have a removal anyway. Maybe keeping his block meter uncharged is the way? What's better here? This means we can't really make a play. It means he can't hard a choke regardless, though. We're doing seven. We were going to need... We're going to need... A little extra damage next turn. We're going to need the one extra... The two extra damage from this, probably. Alright, I'm going to let Pogo die. Depends what his block meter does. I think draining is the safest thing here. I have another mug. I think this is right. This does survive. You know, with the flame face. We have the fruitcake for the removal here. So we're really just going for 2, 2, and 5. And at, when we drain his block meter, that shouldn't be that hard. Does he have any more heals? He does have this. Okay. Huh? Oh, man. <laughs> heals are real. Now he's healing for four in this lane. Oh, he's healing so much. Uh, so we have to fruitcake this. Uh, I think I'm going to... I'm going to give my mug the cheese here just so he doesn't heal this turn. That also means I don't have a play for next turn. Could really use another fruitcake here. We're not really doing enough damage. Here comes Astro Vera. We have got Fruitcake. Such a huge tap deck. Too bad we haven't found an environment yet. This is sad. Sad indeed. I might have to save this Fruitcake for this Dr. Pepper if he continues to heal here. That's weird. Okay. Pepper is a 6 6 now. Um, this is hitting us for six. Man, we're not in good shape. We're not in good shape. He's just clogging too many lanes. We don't have a way to break through with these, with the strike through. We should be developing pirates instead of Pogo Mug, I suppose. Blocks. Deadly, not yet. We'll do that next turn and have a way to kill this Dr. Pepper. He's healing more, though. Oh, man. Another flame face. I suppose it's flame face in case he does more team ups and stuff. Well, stealing block when you're strong here. I also have a well. Yeah, I'm going with this. It's in deadly. Um, so he's used heal, and he's used walnut, right? Rocket. Instead of going face, he goes defensively. Another heal. Man. <laughs> the budget heal deck, but he's getting it done, I mean. Okay, I have to use the deadly here. I think we'll be able to set up a really decent 
play coming up for next turn. He's not really running out of cards, is the problem. And he's still gonna be at 16 health here. That's a Procus block. So we rolled a 3, so the Monkey Pirate didn't accomplish a damn thing. Maybe proccing his block is good there. So he either has Super or, bu or Bubble in hand. Uh, we're at 10 health, which is <laughs> nice, all things considered. You know what I really need? I really need a... Uh, <laughs> I really, really need... A, um... Oh, I should have pogoed here. I, I might have messed this up. I, I, I really need an environment. I think I'm just going with the con man here. No pogo next turn. Just get some strike throughs. Man, look at this guy. Ugh. <laughs> Playing some strong PvZ heroes here. We're just not getting enough damage. Getting out healed. This is gonna clear a field here. Not the way I wanted this first tournament match to go. He's still at 18 health. We're at 6 now. Um, it's gonna be Pogo Pogo Monkey Pirate. So the Monkey Pirate goes in the lane where. It doesn't die, I suppose. We'll be able to mug with a double pogo next turn. He's not running out of cards because we're using pogo as removal, too. And we haven't gotten an environment yet. Looks like he's only going to have the two plays here, so we get the full value. Um, it also means that we can't mug, which is sad. It's gonna have the Dr. Pepper and the splash combos and everything coming up. I guess he got that melon from the root cake. He's still holding a super power hand. No, he used bubble just now. So his last power is super, which he's holding. We're not in good shape. I'm not gonna win this. I'm not gonna win this one. We just don't have enough we just don't have enough damage against the heal deck. Which is amazing because I thought that Pirates against Heal was the best matchup. Was literally the best matchup. <laughs> well, he's going face. Fortunately, we have the block meter. And he goes with Spine Apple. He got that from Fruitcake. We are done! He's healing still up to 20 health. We have none. We've accomplished nothing. Uh, we'll do this and then mug anyway next turn, so... That heals for four. We'll be able to put a full field on his main pirate finally. There's only one play. Oh, this is not going well. Okay, I, I might as well just concede right now. We're so done. We can't. We just there's just not enough damage. We did not develop our tempo fast enough in the in the in the early game. This just dies for free now, it's guaranteed lethal. Alright, good for you, man. We are 0-1. Nice way to start the tournament off. Heal decks, man. This is literally the, the matchup of the little bit I prepared in the stream yesterday. I was talking to the chat about heal decks. And uh, how the match... I always... I figured that pirates would be able to really, really whip heal, but... You know, maybe getting more conmans and more grave robbers in the beginning. And not opting for pogo mug. I didn't really know what kind of deck I would be up against, but it looks like he's uh, really favoring the heal decks there. And he's using Boogaloo. Boogs! Not what I was expecting to face, that's for sure. Taking me by surprise. Um, so against Boogaloo, let's see here. I definitely want to keep a little bit of early game. Hmm, this is a, a lot of early game to keep. I'd love some ramp. 
How hard do we mulligan for a ramp here? I feel like Disco Nod is pretty dangerous early. This is probably a little bit more of an overall effective card, I guess especially against Conman, so I'm gonna look for the ramp by mulliganing that. Uh, I'll keep the Shrinking Violet. It's probably gonna be some Swarm Boogaloo deck. There's the Conman we we're expecting. Uh, I ran Primal Pea Shooter and the Corn. The, I never ever run the Corn card. Uh, I used the the Colonel, the, not Colonel Corn, whatever it's called, uh, Colonel Pult in order to tech Teacher and Paparazzi, and uh, the, this is in order to tech Conman. <sighs> He's actually trying to use his Conman for value here, which is cool. Um, I think I'm just gonna. Well, the thing is, what if I top deck exactly a three drop next turn? Then this is gonna be unplayable. I sort of wanna play this next turn on the unlife to sort of mess up his his plans. So I think I'm actually gonna pass. So hopefully we just don't get, you know, exactly our four copies of. Our, we only have one, one three drop running, which is the Sunnier Shroom. Uh, so that just dies. Got Brainana. So I'm I'm gonna go now. See, I, I wanted to make him think that that the unlife of the party is a really good deal for him here. Uh, as we go in. This is gonna get gotified now. We are going to um, have a shrinking violet, which I'm also using again to play around a lot of the swarm decks which I expect to encounter. Is running like a budget a budget um, swarm deck here. We're behind for now, but we have a lot of uh, really powerful late game. This Shrinking Violet should definitely find value here. Uh, and so it does. Uh, definitely get rid of the Dance Rinse of the Goat, in case he's running um, Flamenco. It's a really strong Shrinking Violet. It's only doing two damage now. This also gives us another superpower, which is cool. Just means if he's playing any serious late game, we don't really have to worry about it. Coming later. Uh, so it's either Shrinking or Astra. I think the Astrocado is a safe enough play here. It develops a lot of tempo. He could have a Lightning Bolt, though, which is going to screw this up and actually make this do a little bit too much damage. Uh, the Cobb Cannon is a really good play here. If he doesn't have Lightning Bolt, this is insanity. He didn't use Backup Dancers. <laughs> We could just go for the Shrinking Violet here. It's probably safer overall. And this is as good of a Shrinking Violet as we get. Let's do it. Second Shrinking. That's a tough decision. It really could be the Astrica. We also have Weed Whack into Shrinking Violet perhaps later. Is us getting more superpowers? Is us getting... We've got our Godify and our Weed Whack. Is getting Mog and Freeze worth it? It probably isn't. He's still going for Dancers. This is probably a two-cost Dancer, like a Kanga. I presume. He's already conjured two. Oh boy. Just gotta survive here. <laughs> Maybe I should be setting. I'm just worried about. His, I'm not worried about his lightning bolt anymore. So I'm. I'm really. He's kind of handing me this one. We could set up the bird very easily, and I'll set up Astrocado. Uh, I think this is when we start preventing damage. I'm gonna set up bird. So we're able to really take whatever else he plays here. It is Kanga. Against the bird. I might be playing very conservatively. I forgot to set up my, my, my side sink, by the way, so the game's still a little bit choppy. I've been playing my bird like really super conservative. Like, I I I could I should probably be playing a little bit more aggressive. He passes with six, so this is the turn that we bring Nana for sure. Um, so it's gonna be bring Nana and a little bit of ramp. 
Pranana, such a powerful card. We're developing an insane amount of tempo. This is better than Tractor. Tractor will be useful later. This helps us ramp now. So he's just doing two damage this turn, which is nice. Uh, we also have the... So we either have Dragon or we have a Cob Cannon combo since we're making nine. Yeah. I can actually use the Tractor theoretically to set up the Dragon to get more value. I got a Mog there now. Unlife. Orchestra. <laughs> it's not really going to be able to play any tricks this turn, so I might as well go for the... I think I might as well go for this play. I should probably... Mm, is this Brainana living worth it? I think the, the dragon's going to be good later in the middle. Alright. So I'm going to do this play. Should I play a tractor here? I'm going to save it. This Kanga does not have overshoot. I'll probably take out the Primal. He only has the one brain now. Six. That should hopefully be the last bit of damage we take. I don't have any healing. Try to set this dragon up as soon as possible. There's some life. It looks like dragon with the tractor setup is going to be really good here. So it's going to be... Drago and drag you. Here. Blocking this just in case he fruitcakes, I guess. Uh, that should do it, unless he has a fruitcake. He has lightning bolt. So that'll... that costs seven. And we got him. Oh, no, it heals! Oh, come on, man. <laughs> okay. Plus he blocked. Ugh, all right. Uh, we have Cobb Cannon now. The uh, Cobb Plus. Colonel. Uh, Colonel actually makes this die, which is nice. The Colonel Pull. This is the second reason I'm running Colonel Pull here. Is to... Um, I'm just going to... Well, I might as well team these up. It's not going to be able to play two alien uses. Well, uh, yeah, like this. Colonel. Doesn't really matter which one. Cup. Clears that. And we'll, we'll develop this just in case... Uh, well, he can't really play any tricks right now. Yeah, so we should have him here. Alright! Rose wins. <laughs> Breathing a sigh of relief. Alright, before I do anything else, I am going to set up my side sync so the quality of the stream's a little bit higher. Sorry about that, guys. How do we go fast enough to keep up with this damn heal deck? We the way you do a heal deck is by developing a ton of tempo. I gotta stick with pirate. I gotta stick with it. I think. I think so. All right. Let's go. It's one to one. Now, I don't like it because we already lost lost a matchup like this. He's running Chomzilla now. It's probably another the same thing. We don't have to worry about the Grave Tech here. Uh, I think getting a more early game tempo is going to go a long way here. We're going to keep the environment this time. That's for damn sure. I think pass and hope for Infinity Clones is a miracle. M absolute miracle. <laughs> Here we go. It also gives us value from the Monkey Pirate next turn, which is extremely good. I, I really want to test a lot of these matchups on stream sometime. Uh, again, the, 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 maybe the, maybe this matchup against Heal really does does work. What is he? He's going to Scorch? 
The brilliant Scorch? Come on, man. Okay, so he Scorches. Very interesting. Uh, I'll mark that off on my little cheat sheet. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, where's my game? Let's go. Annoying. So he's hit him three times, and it looks like he has a full... No, yeah. Looks like he has a full block, man. That's weird. Double strike environment. That's odd. The question is, should we go for an environment this turn? What is he going to put here? Trying cards. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to set up the swashbuckler and the con man. So much tempo. And we have this, uh, just in case there's anything too scary. Catch a mechanic. Nice. I'm waiting on the environment. Wait till we get more value out of it. So the, we're getting the tempo that we really wanted. Unfortunately, this happens, but we will have um, flame face for kick, so the flame face can can actually grow here. Doesn't have any kind of doom shrooms or anything. So once that we get a feel that starts growing like this, it's not a whole lot that Chompsilla can do. His super will definitely help here if he gets it. His ultimate. He got it. Okay. <laughs> Both getting a little lucky with the superpowers. That's huge. It's absolutely tremendous. Uh, I'm going to let this hit us and we're going to go for the fruitcake play. Just going to try to keep on relentlessly hitting his face. Looks like heal is the thing. I bet you he's setting up the coffee grounds just as a bait and he's actually running a heal deck. Because I'm seeing catch it mechanic, which I don't really... And he was running heal. He's he banned also Wall Knight and Chumzilla, which is making me think that he's favoring he's gonna be running heal decks himself, perhaps. I don't know if that's true. Another one. Three three now. That's interesting. Banana. Um <sighs> Is this banana launcher dangerous enough? We do have to take it out. Uh it kind of dies in two turns to this. I wonder if we just keep these fruitcakes, though. I really don't want to be feeding him too many cards here. Everything of mine lives. I could kill the, the, the ketchup. I could do a lot of things here, man. Is him getting one banana bomb a problem? I feel like I want to save this for his heal environments. I think I'm just passing here. I know some of you at home might think this is a mistake not to use any of these cards here. Another trapper. The luxury of doing multiple things. So I get the banana bomb, can kill this flame face, I suppose. But this just kinda dies anyway for free this turn, unless he makes a huge play here. Is he gonna grow this somehow? It does. Alright. More heals. Look at the heals, guys. So we definitely fruitcake this. Ain't no doubt about that. Uh, I think keeping this flame face alive is worth it to spend one of these traps. And let's go. So doing three, two, and two here. Um, I'm going to do this next turn with the strike through. Uh, we don't necessarily need, you know, we don't have a, we have a full field already. So we don't necessarily need the, um, an extra card here. Healing more. <laughs> okay, his last power is, wait, he, did he use Holoflora? Oh, he used Holoflora. He has no more superpowers left. We didn't get a minion, unfortunately. Uh, we do have all the removal we need. We just need the six damage. He boops that, of course. Do not have enough damage anymore. He sets up a heal combo. We have all the answers to that. Um, looks like Deadly's pretty good. He goes for Veggie Mutation. <sighs> I'm gonna do this because we need a card.
How big of a problem is this? I'll be getting us down to eight. We have to fruit cake this so we don't die next turn. How good is keeping this monkey pirate alive? It just means we'll have three threats. I don't think we need to stay alive, and us being able to clear something away from this grave robber I think is more important. This also dies regardless. There's another flame face. We'll put that in one. Just to be able to contest some wacky, I don't know, some wacky repeat moss combo, we put some one. for flower heels. Uh, and that'll do it. That'll do it. Alright. Two and one. Another sigh of relief. <laughs> I don't feel confident. Haven't prepared. Okay, this is fine. Um, uh, Alright, so we're on game... game or match point. Eight. Nine. Ten. All right, so we finally connected. The game has been glitching glitching off. Uh, we have not been able to connect to the friend list. We are in a casual match now. So you can see I did get the correct opponent, finally. Oh my goodness, he's running Smash, which is an interesting choice. Um, question is, do I keep Repeat Moss? Yeah, this should be fine. <sighs> should I look for some more early game, though, perhaps? I can probably get Repeat Moss later. I don't want this to brick. All right, this is also better. I got Smash here. Alright, so we're going to be playing this game now. <laughs> this is crazy. We did connect, though, through the... Um... Oh, man. We did connect through the through the casual. We both queued for casual. We tried it a whole bunch of times, and finally we got it. Alright, so he uses superpower on that, which I'm happy to see, to be honest. Um, again, the Fireweed is probably better against Smash than... Then Black IP, we'll see what he plays. We do have a three drop now. Um, against pass, so again, he could have Rolling Stone. He wouldn't have been able to use Rolling Stone, so we haven't really tested for it. Um, in general, a Fireweed is better. He might have Extinction Event. I think there's more Rolling Stones than Extinction Events, so I'm going to I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Fireweed. Even though Black IP is so tempting against that pass from Smash on turn two. And it goes with an environment. Oof. So I, I've used my environment already, which is a little sad. That environment actually controls this, um... Oh, this cat lady. That's so interesting. Goat. Look at the aggression from this guy. Man. Uh, so we can go Black Eyed P. We can also go with this. <sighs> what do I do here? I, I can't play the... I can't play this anymore. Uh, I think it's Black Eyed P and Meteor. It's weird. It just means if he buffs this with a lunchbox, uh, it'll still die. Let's see what else he has up his sleeve. Man, he's going Swarm Pets. Going with Smash. Could have expected that. Okay. He still has this this active oh, man. I wasn't playing around hunting grounds at all. Ah, goes with the gravestone. I'm actually really afraid of nuts and berries right now. Really afraid. Very very afraid of nuts and berries. And I don't want to develop this. What is this gonna be? If it was rats, it would be here. Is there any other? Uh, I guess I have my cheat sheet. So let's look for gravestones that cost three and four. I mean, it could just be fireweed or a landscaper. I guess that's a pretty common. It could be loudmouth. Very likely loudmouth. <sighs> that's a tough gravestone. Trash would have gone here. I'm really afraid of nuts and berries here. Even though this is such an inefficient play, if I don't play the. All right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna play this. Pass. No, he decided to instead of going after the three two, decided to go uh, face with rats. Um, 
So we should actually get a, a block here. I think this is... I think this is worth it. It usually hits face, and this also just protects it from a bunch of things next turn. Unfortunately, he blocked the six. It's really sad. Uh, this is probably going to be Berry Blast. He buffs the goat, man. I might play, instead of giving him more value from Hunting Grounds, I might just go um, five damage in lane three. I think that's what I'm going to do. No, I didn't save that for Repeat Moss. If I had Repeat Moss in my hand, I probably would have saved that superpower. But we actually have 11 on his face right now. If He he only has three cards. He doesn't necessarily have an answer here. He doesn't necessarily... Well, he left three, so he must have a trick. No, it's guaranteed lethal. Wow, that game went... As is usual with Captain Combustible, just... Oh, right, so that's going to make us 3-1, and one, and we won. We got past <laughs> this first round. Of the t I should be more confident. I've been playing this game for five years. Almost. I should definitely be a little bit more... A little bit more confident. <laughs> I just haven't prepared. And I think other people have. You know, I'm gonna maybe do some more testing. Uh, maybe during stream against some of the, you know, Discord decks and understand those matchups a little bit better. Uh, but this was fun. This is just such a different experience from playing ranked because, you know what I mean? You're like... <laughs> You know, rank people just play meme decks. People are actually tryharding here. Again, this was definitely not a typical opponent. He probably seemed to be running pretty budget decks too, so it probably doesn't have all the cards in the game, which is a different thing. Anyway, guys, that was round one. See you in round two. All right, guys, so here is round two of the uh, tournament here. I'm going to be playing against T-Bone Gamer, as you can see. Uh, it looks like we've connected pretty well with the PvP. Uh, I'm going to be starting off using this uh, Bullseye Aggro deck. Uh, I think I took out the, the Grave Busters since I'm not particularly... Uh, I'm not particularly expecting him to play my many Gravestones. Instead, I put Primal Potato Mine because I'm expecting him to do the, the Discord meta thing where you play a bunch of con men and, uh, you know... Aerobics instructors and stuff like that. Uh, really curious to actually see what he pulls out because I really don't actually know a whole lot about this player. And it's underway. We're going in with the Grass Knuckles, running in Morticia. Was not expecting that at all. So we'll see if Morticia can hold this deck. We have um, Black Eyed Pea in this deck, so we're going to hope to get that. There's actually a lot of cards here that Morticia is going to be ha going to have problems with. I wonder what. I have no idea what this deck's going to be. I'm not expecting anyone to play Morticia in the tournament. Uh, I'm going to mulligan you. So one, two, three. This could be okay. This could be okay. It's nice to set this up and then the Juggernaut, perhaps, will actually have options. Yeah, this is fine. Really nice aggressive starting hand here. I'll go with the Galacta first. Uh, this one will want to be on heights. Uh, I should put my Immortisha cheat sheet up. Uh, she does not have, probably does not have bats or summoning, so it's probably Evaporator Acid. Rain in hand, you gotta keep that in mind. <sighs> um. Passed again. Could be beam me up. I think this is the right play regardless. Nice try, Keratops. I'm not really sure what T-Bone's expecting me to play there. This is someone, I think, who's watched a decent amount of my streams in the past, knows a little bit about me. It's hard to really play the advanced mind games. Everyone has a different mindset here. Uh, by the way, my bands, his bands were um, Electric Boogaloo and Infinity. Interesting choice of Electric Boogaloo. I think she, he just doesn't want to get rushed down by aggro decks, but I... Uh, on the zombie side, and on the plant side, banned Walnut and Spit Out. A lot of people are banning Spit Out because that's considered to be a strong choice. There's a really slow uh, extinction event using that on the one drop while this Triceratops just grows. Um, these Primal Potato Mines don't seem to be, aren't, don't look like they're going to be very good in this matchup, but who knows? Hopefully, we'll get value from it eventually. Uh, I'm just going to continue the onslaught here. I sort of, I'm just wondering about, I think since I'm playing the Juggernaut. I think since I'm playing the Juggernaut, the Galactic Cactus is safe here. 
it will damage like I, he's not gonna really be able to make like a double play here I, I don't think so we're gonna go with this just keep the attack going uh, hopefully we'll get a Gatling P at some point here probably better to put the non bullseye minions on the field later plus this also sets up for the Gatling P a little bit better have not seen a superpower yet if he has evaporate we'll see it here um Acid Rain seems decent. Okay, it is Acid Rain, but it's still pretty slow. Beam Me Up would be decent against the Triceratops now. If he has it. There's another Extinction event. Ah, we're still doing a lot. Too bad the Triceratops is dead. But at least it wasn't Evaporate. Oh, it's, it's, him starting with Acid Rain is pretty lucky on our part. The Nastarus Rex is very good against the Morticia. Uh, it doesn't really have a great answer for this if it's not on heights. I have no idea what that's going to be. Uh, you want to put this more to the right. So block, then charge, even though our block meter is at zero. There's teleportation zombie. Can be really, okay. It's a gravestone. Two cost gravestone. Probably second teleportation zombie. In my estimation. Blocks this damage. Still doing a little bit of bullseye. Really would like to see Gatling P soon. No real way of utilizing this time to shine, so we're just going to do the obvious play here. Yeah, the splash damage doesn't really hurt us. It does kill this um, second teleportation zombie, which is nice. See if he teleports in... I don't even know. Supernova Guard? It could be he's actually playing to tech Pine Clone. It could be you really expect me to bring a Pine Clone deck. That's with all the extinction events. Wouldn't even be surprised. Okay, he's running with Rocket. Wow. I <laughs> did not know what to expect here, clearly. A little bit of ramp. Opponent's running really low on cards. The first um, teleportation zombie does die here. Unfortunately, this primal potato mine seems completely useless. I'd really love to see a Gatling. Got it. Uh, Gatling plus bonus attack should just win here. Um... I believe the two damage is better than the one. Well, the two damage doesn't hit. I wonder if I should do this on the ground, actually, because the bullseye is probably better. Gatling P rolls a one, and that's guaranteed lethal, so I'll take that. One to zero. I still actually have no idea what deck he was running. I have absolutely no clue. It was teleportation zombies. Control. Was that a teleport zombot deck? Maybe it was teleport zombot. I really have no idea. Beta Caratina. What? What? Again, there might be a version of this with Brainanos and stuff that's going to be dangerous. Really nice to see our um, Valk right off the bat. I'm going to look for minions. And uh, we have them, so it's a really good start. Again, the, the way that Valken tricks your decks lose, and this deck loses when you don't get in your starting hand. You, it can actually get it if you win if you get it late, but you have to be really controlling the field very, very well, not spending too many resources doing that, so those resources are able to charge your Valken Trickster later. Really a huge luxury. Again, but that's why I run them Valken Trickster together, just because that lose condition of not getting it is much, much less likely to happen when you have two different win conditions. I'm, I'm just going to be spamming this guy. We'll see if he has the forget-me-nuts. It'll be a little bit harsh. Does not. Um, again, this is Valk, so... That's fine. Who knows what this deck's gonna be. I, th again, Beta Caratina, last hero I would have ever expected. This was literally tier zero. Like, the, the absolute last thing I was gonna expect here. This Beta freaking Caratina. This beat me up as a really strong play here. Again, we're able to control him, develop a minion on the field. Um... If he passes, I'll just develop this so we can play the Quasar next turn. Uh, I think this will go on the ground in lane 2 if he passes, and then the Quasar will go on heights. Turns out... It's happening. Now, it's nice we have the Fruitcake in hand in case we need to control this. We can do it a little bit extra damage, either with the Quasar power or with the Trapper. We're almost always playing Quasar on heights here. That's nice Trickster. That could be useful. So we'll have two different options here. Freeze. Not a great superpower, but might come in handy. Could get some value from it. Um, if he uses a power that draws two cards here, I think I'll Trapper maybe to keep that in check. Ooh, we're kind of low on cards already. So he'll probably play this minion, which means Trapper should be able to kill the Triceratops, which is really nice. I'm not really concerned about his environments. 
proactive. Ooh. He's pulling that. Interesting. <laughs> so I believe the fruitcake is just going to end up hitting the Triceratops next turn. Almost no matter what. So I don't think there's any point in spending the, uh, the environment here. Probably better to counter something he plays with that. In fact, this can begin to work on something else next turn. Maybe. Delta 4. Let's see what we get. Another Quasar. Really happy about that. Really, really happy. Turns out the Trapper might have been good now that we got exactly Quasar. There's Deadly. If he plays his 2-drop here, we're good. Oh, oh, man. There's... I mean, okay. So we can either Fruitcake. We can Deadly Free. Oh, we could do a lot of things here. I'll probably end up playing whatever he got on the water, but... Man. Really happy to see second Quasar there. That's a minion and a trick, so it'll actually continue to develop our Valk. It's card draw, which we really needed. This is going to draw another card. The Deadly was a really good superpower there, too. Um, all right. Question is, what do we do here? We could take the four damage. Um, I can't say I feel very comfortable using the Fruitcake on the Snapdragon. Snapdragon is pretty good here. I wish I could freeze the Snapdragon. If this froze every lane, that would be a balanced superpower all of a sudden. Snapdragon's a little bit annoying. I think I'm just going to Fruitcake here and take the two for one. It's a little bit sad, but we have to use that Fruitcake eventually on the Triceratops. <clears throat> Too bad we didn't use the Deadly there. Really sad, actually. Kind of screwed right now. Now I'm going to use this Deadly for a... For a Unfortunately, going to use this for a card, I think. I'll probably freeze whatever's on the ground, too. Ugh. I don't actually like this hand. And top decking a second trickster, trickster is this is complete garbage. It's really completely unplayable. We'll see what we get, though. There's a lot of lot of good things to come out of this. Wow, we... Deadly. Beam me up. He's just going to be doing one damage here. Freeze. Uh, Trapper. Uh, and this is turn six, so I'll probably just play a Trickster. This does three. This dies next turn. I don't think there's any justification not playing Trickster here. Uh, I gotta play this here. Well, the, the, the splash damage is a little bit harsh against this trickster. The thing is, he could get a lot of damage in in this lane just with a high health minion, just a primal walnut. But I, I, um, it might not be the end of the world. That's tough. This is always gonna just do one. This is tough. I, don't, I think the value he gets from this Snapdragon is too high, so let's play a trickster here. Get some board presence. Get some damage in. I'll have to deal with this trickster in one way or another. You know, this Pecanal is going to die, so even if he does a little bit of damage, that's not going to be the end of the world. Again, if he has, you know, we're not probably not going to roll double three. So if he has a Primal Walnut, he could do get us down to five here, which is exceedingly bad. But that's our life. The Primal Walnut would anyway be such a terrible trade against this trickster. I really like the threat. In fact, yeah, Trickster plus Trickster could even just win. You know, we'll have open... Uh, anyway. It's nice having this beam me up in hand, even though it's not playable here. That's... Is that a reincarnation? No, this is the card he got from Genetic Amplification. Very interesting. So he's going for the theory where you clog the lane. He's going for seven. That is a lot. Um, Spicanel actually still lives. We're getting six damage in. Here's one. Roll the two. Roll the two. Um, here's another six, letting us get that. Uh, I don't think we're gonna even really need the Valk. In fact, the Trickster is kind of always more valuable than the Valkyrie here. So, he could win with Brainana if we rely too heavily on this. I think it's Valk, um, 
beam me up. I think I'm just actually gonna do the Valk here. Because uh we want we 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 don't we the the Snapdragon's just getting a little bit too much value. There's another Picanolith. Interesting he's not going face with that. Uh, I'm gonna develop a beam me up, I believe, to proc the block here. This Picanolith dies. Uh, I don't see lethal for next turn yet, though. Oh, that's very sad. Very sad indeed. So this is gonna do for proc or block. I wonder if I just take out the Snapdragon now. I can't proc his block anyway. Alright. This is interesting. This is only gonna do three to the Stinger. These Picanolists are strong. Place next turn. Off six plus one. Another bell. So I believe we go after the Picanola here. I'll just play back Dancers defensively. It's a pretty good defense here. I'll probably just go for lethal. Uh, we're not in good shape though. Five full block meter. I mean, we have this trickster the moment that we're able to uh, get an empty lane here, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. It's nice we're preventing all the damage. Like, this is the second Bacanal. It's probably not going to have a third one, so it's going to really limit the ability that he's in this deck going to be able to even do seven damage now. I, I, it's hard to even see who's favorite here. I think he is. This Valk's also active. Ugh. We really just have to proc his block. It's number one priority. Looks like this Trickster is going to be pretty beefy even after this turn's done, though. He wants for the... Hmm, interesting. The attack. Got the armored minion there. Obviously, this is the play. Uh, he is allowing us to proc the block, and he doesn't really have any minions that can clear a lane here. Even his tractor, there's no lane that he can manipulate here. Uh, he's just getting some cards. Something I could definitely use. Card advantage is just significant, but Trickster's dead. Or the uh, Pecanal is dead. Trickster's very, very much alive. We're really just waiting for a lane to clear up for this Trickster. <sighs> okay, yeah, so it's definitely going to be... This is going to go here. And we'll be able to use the fruitcake in order to clear lane potentially. I'll even let the 7 2 kill this. Uh, and it looks like Trickster should be able to come in for 6. Uh, if he plays Dragon in lane 1, he wins. He wins with Dragon. This is our life now. There's no, we have to play the Valk there. So, uh, very scary. Now, before he played the. Um, Vegetation, the, the the light speed seed. He only had one card in hand. Yeah, so he has actually only two cards plus two random tricks. His tricks might be active too. I mean, if he gets strike through, uh, if he gets strike through, we're fine because it's only five damage. But this fruitcake is an insanely, insanely good top deck. I mean, ridiculously good. I I, I think we I think we have. Ooh, okay, that's fine. Cherry bomb. But he's going for the win. Uh, it looks like we have the answer, though. He's doing five. Uh, we are able to fruitcake the big heavy hitter here for seven damage. Uh, and we have guaranteed lethal on the top of the turn. It's actually a done deal. So, good game. In fact, we just win here. Okay. Um, went for Cherry Bomb, which is one of the cards he conjured. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Two very, uh, very interesting matches here. Instead, I put in the Raptors instead of the Fire Wings. And an extra Black IP. See what it goes with. And it is Zemek. Alright, this will be an interesting matchup. 
the the main thing that makes you lose here is him get this is a really 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 good hand against Emek. Just having a one, two, and three, including the being black IP, and and so I have to keep this hand and having a little bit of backup in the for the late game. Hopefully, we'll get a puff shroom at some point. Uh, if he gets his Emek super, it helps him a lot, a lot. In fact, I'm gonna if he plays Con Man here, I'm literally just gonna play the Blooming Heart Dry uh, just so it doesn't get down to one health, so I can't splash the two of these next turn. Um, and here it is. Here's Emek. This is really though again, I banned Brainstorm. And Infinity, so it's sort of the hero I was expecting to uh, face a lot of Z-Mac. It seems like he has some, at least what are considered to be strong decks. He's running Bungie Plumber. So far, he's got the game under control again. We have this Onion Ring, so even getting controlled here, which he's not going to be able to control these next two turns, he's actually not going to be able to at all. Um, still fine. I, I think just because of Trapper territory, which is the only difference between heights and grounds in this game. Um, see if he fruitcakes us, by the way, which would be good. Did not have an answer to Black IP, so we're we're really, really, really far ahead, especially because we have a really strong play coming up for next turn. Uh, we also have our superpower in our hand, which means just burst damage. Uh, so we have the tempo play. I wonder if he, you think he's good running weed spray? He's ran Bungie Plumber. You think he's got Wii? I mean, past turn three. I could go for some stupid play here, but... You know what? If he has Weed Spray, the Onion Rings... It's not the end of the world. It's a one-card advantage. And if he doesn't have it... If he doesn't have Weed Spray, this is just so... An insurmountable... A seemingly insurmountable amount of tempo. He could even have just, like, Flick, which means the Black IP becomes a 3-4. I mean... Anything weed spray, <laughs> we're putting him in a situation where if he doesn't have weed spray, he's kind of dead. There's Wrath, so this is almost for sure Gargmech. I don't know what happened to his early game. I have no idea what happened to his early game. I really might even... Oh, did we develop a... a, a... I don't even know how aggressive I get here. Let's see what he does. I feel like these are a lot better after you play Onion Rings. Man, I, I kind of wish I had something a little bit better than a, than a one drop. Hmm, especially on the turn he's blocking. Having three of these on turn six, though, is going to be really strong. Superpower doesn't really help. I think Biggin would have overall been better just for tempo here. What, what if he commits something, though? This barrel. Uh, should expect to see final mission. I think we just pass and try to wreck him with some onion rings down the stretch. We'll have a fourth a fourth minion. We're really almost running no tricks, just four berry blasts and three plant food. So it does go for the final mission. So that uh, actually kind of wins this trade here, which is sad. So we'll win against the two too. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like he rolled, um, he rolled double threes, right? We've hit him twice, and he has a full block meter already, which really affects this, because we could have developed him. It's, it's extremely sad. I mean, plant food is going to be good in terms of getting damage here. Um, I think we use this as a control card now. You know, at any point, we just have a burst of 9 damage, which is amazing. He didn't have a Garg. Like, a Hippity Hop Garg would have been a really a, a big, big problem there. And it doesn't look like, unless he has a fruit, unless he fruitcakes us, he's not going to be able to play the Gas Giant um, for another turn now. If he had a Hippity Hop Garg, believe you me, he would have played it on turn 5 there with the Gargologist. Gargologist, of course, makes it go from 5 cost to 3 cost. protects that so he will we will be seeing a gas giant uh, the gas giant isn't great because it um it kind of just just busts this this 4-1 he has here it's a bonk joy aerobics oh and gas giant it's rough uh using plant food might actually be good here um Take this. 
just to preserve this guy on the field. It also, again, prevents this 4 damage from hitting us right now. Uh, I think I spend the Bonk Choi, so we'll have these 4 4s very much into. Well, actually, we don't want him lightning bolting that this turn. He's probably blocking here. So let's uh, let's make this play. He could lightning bolt the 4 1 and keep the Gargoyle. I don't think the Gargoyle is very unlikely he's going to really have any more Gargs to play. If this rolls a 1, that's huge. 6 damage. So getting Strength can kill a 4 4. Uh, getting either Lightning Bolt will. It doesn't do a whole lot. Again, he can either protect his Gargologist. He actually gets the Super, so it's a 2 for 1. It's a good play. Um, he seems to be in a little bit of trouble here. The Super Power is probably going to be active. That dies. At least that dies. Got a full block meter again. Which means time to shine. Time to shine. Maybe just looming around the corner. I think I'll set up the other gargologist. Going for removal here. So this is going to go face. Question is, do I want to take out this Gargologist here? Do I want to take this one out? With a 4-1, or do I want to just use this in a lane next turn? So anyway, proccing the block, sort of anyway what happens. I don't want to use the superpower yet because of um, Brute Gig. We can really remove it before it gets any value. The moment we get a repeat moss, we kind of just win this game. Probably blocking this turn. Three attack for one cost. Pretty good against uh, these three elf minions. I could have played this, but I, I think it's better just to leave the Gargologist on the field. And uh, get this for face value later. He's still at 16 health, which is a lot. I have no idea what he has in his hand. I mean, it's not more minions, or else I think he would play it. Maybe he's just not trying to not waste his minions here. So he goes final mission. So this actually represents three damage. I'll take out the 6 3. This is nice now. And that's his play. That, you know, the final mission. It's such a liability. It's so good if you have barrel because it doesn't cost you a guy, but now just the liability aspect is just so good. It's so huge. Um, this actually creates lethal next turn, so I'm just going to hold on to this. Especially if we get repeat monster. Okay. So at the moment he starts, you know, overplaying minions and stuff, we can just set up lethal in one of the lanes. If not, we're just going to slow it down a little bit. Probably buff the 4-1. Just create another threat and play black IP here. He's out of steam, which you know the the Gargmech deck it has to. You have to be let getting your guys like your you know your guys continue to get a ton of value like the aerobics instructor and stuff like that. And people told me that the Captain Quickwin would not do well against Gargmech. I mean, maybe they didn't consider Onion Rings. Uh, so the question is here, um, you know, again, Fruitcake. I think he would have played. I should probably just set up, just try to set up lethal here. It's unlikely he'll have, I mean, he could fruit kick the well. If he fruit kicks, he kind of loses no matter what here. I think this is correct. Go for the nine. And if not, we'll have this. And the Gargoyle just also dies. I mean, he might have like Fruitcake Wrath, but in that case, he'll have no cards and I'll have one, so. And we'll have guys in the field still. We'll have two guys in the field, we'll have nothing, and we'll have two cards in our hands as one next turn. So there's the Fruitcake. Very, very sad Fruitcake. I mean, it prevents lethal, so he has to do it, but we got a decent minion too. Nice tempo. Proctor's block is actually good there, so now we can uh, get it going. Can't really even play the superpower, which is sad. 
Um, this is not evolution. I don't really have any nuts. There's Rocky Moss. Ugh. Okay, kind of. But this is again a three-four and protects the six-three from dying here. We have so many threats in the field. Is two cards on a superpower now. Uh, too bad we didn't get this one turn earlier. Uh, the moment we get, you know, Berry Blast, we obviously win anyway. But I'm just gonna play this in line one. Not really much to say about this here. This pinging us will uh, perhaps give us a superpower. We're we're in we're in good shape. How does he have three cards now? Hippity hop. I have no idea what this last card is. Maybe it's final mission. It just dies. Uh, we gotta prevent the damage here. That egg, the egg splash is a little bit sad. It's very sad. In fact, that's a really strong play from him. So uh, we're kind of almost just playing for berry blast now. What is even final mission? Well, final mission, the 3-4. The Take the face damage. Probably. No, but then he actually, if he does that, he loses to Black IP. So he has to final mission the, the Black IP if he has that. Who knows what the last card in his hand is. He didn't have anything. Uh, so right now, okay, so there's going to be two eggs here. I believe he always gets eggs in both lanes, right? This... So he does not lose. This egg just dies. This Bonk Joy dies. Looks like we need a Berry Blast now. Plant food would also be lethal. Yeah. So now he has two cards. He held on to one of them last turn. I have no idea what he's holding on to here. No idea. Yeah, pretty hot. Uh, I think the repeat moss is better because it activates with plant food. Also activates with superpowers, which might happen eventually. Probably the heavier minion in front of the hippity hop is correct too. We're actually doing one damage to ourselves, so if he has a way of clearing this black IP, he wins the game. That turns into barrel, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Wait a minute. Black IP just dies now. Well, no, yeah, six plus one, he could just pass and win, usually. It's that. We need double threes now. And the black our split P ends up killing us. Damn. Wow, we were dominating that game. I can't believe we lost that. Good game, man. Good game. Val Valkster versus Barton. Let's go. I don't know. I'm just being really presumptuous. Wasn't expecting more tissue either, so. Uh, and I'm playing zombies. Let's go. Game four. No oh, bra. It's running Rose. This thing. Midros. I really hope he's not attacking Brainana. That would be very, very difficult to deal with. Um, we do have to look for a Valk and a Trickster. That is the very first thing we do. There's a Trickster. Ooh, should I keep this final mission? I think I'm just gonna look for another trick. Double trickster in our starting hand. Alright, it's our life. It's not bad having two tricksters. You'd never want three, but you know, we used two last time. Let's see what happens here. Uh, what is in Midros? I should take a quick peek at the uh, his deck list. Just looking at the. Uh... Ah, where's Midros? Little removal, little removal. Uh, removal, you have Snapdragon, Strike Through, Heavy Strike Through, and drag two dragons in the end. Uh, not running any Forget Me Nuts, which is nice. Uh, I think I play away from Heights because he's probably running Corn, which is better on Heights. That's right here. It's nice getting a 2 3. Uh, I'll play Beam Me up here. Also have the bungee. Well, we'll have the bungee plumber option on three. Really nice top deck bungee. Really strong card. 
I'm going to be putting on the pressure again. The uh, the goal here is try to get him to 12, because then Double Trickster wins, or Mustache Trickster. We have three Mustache. Actually, I'm only running three Mustaches, by the way. I was feeling four was kind of bricky. Never really need two, so... I think a card that you never need two, and you don't necessarily need it to win. You can win with just Trickster. You can win if they're not running Shamrocket, like all these guys. A removal, you know. Or obviously, Rose has removal, but Valk. Valk. And, um... Question is, do we want to use our beam me up, or do we want to... I think I'm actually going to beam me up to face. This is a little bit odd here. Uh, but the Quasar body actually takes out this 3-2 pretty well. And we'll also have a bungee plumber just in case. Gotta watch out for the Snapdragon on turn 4. I should probably just have his deck list up here. Instead of my, um... I just have what I presume is his deck list. Chop, but it'll be really good against the Astrocados. Maybe even against the Dragon. Oh, we might get hit by a um, catch up mechanic. It's a little bit harsh here. But that means we're proccing his block, and he's down to 14 with a Bungee Plumber and a Beam Me Up in hand, so we're, we're doing really, really well here. Really nice having the luxury. He's also running two Grave Flicks, I think. They tech two Grave Flicks, which is uh, dead in this deck. We're not running any Gravestones. Could be a tech amount. Uh, we're in an, an exceedingly good spot right now. He just can't keep up with the with the tempo. That's interesting. Um, he's probably going to. I think I just bungee this. Do I need the extra two? I'll get the two extra two damage from the um, from the beam. Yeah. Even if you go go this, mog it. Freeze it, weed whack, I don't care. None of these matter. Oh, down to 12. The dangerous spot to be against this deck. Turn four already. Um against Snapdragon. I might even draw cards. We'll have Beam Me Up Chop next turn. It doesn't really have any huge threats except for Astrocata. Wow. Wow, we. We can actually theoretically get him down to six health now. We really do want to hit him a third time here because. Is so running Shrinking Violet? Probably not. We want to hit him a third time to proc a block. So it's going to be beam me up. Could have drawn cards there, but I think this is alright. I think the, the, the procing the block here is the most valuable thing. Now he's down to 8 with this field to deal with, which is very sad. I, again, I got rid of one Mustache Monument just put in some card draw, just in case. Really nice to have a really slick answer to Astrocado here. Or to some elderberry combo, if he's this like little buddy elderberry. I think he might be trying to keep the lanes clogged, but he's slow losing health. I mean, it's turn five. So low, man. There's the primal pea shooter, which you're on three in this. <laughs> a little bit sad. <laughs> I guess he has my deck list too. I haven't. I've only changed one card in this deck from my last deck list, which is running one copy of card draw. So if we do two here, we win. It's uh, tricksters are down to. Playable range, turn five. Tricks just cost six. They'll probably get a second trick here anyway out of this card draw, so. We got a mustache monument, just makes it easier. Hi. I think this guy's done so. He's trying to play the block meter, maybe. You know, roll it California roll. No, we don't want to do that. That was the worst thing he could do. Now it's guaranteed lethal. Now it's literally guaranteed lethal. I'm not even gonna, gonna destroy this. Um. Because now he's taking exactly two. He's, we're not even hitting his block meter a few times. We're just hitting him with the trickster here. I think people play around Valk and they don't play around trickster, so he felt safe because it wasn't turn 10 yet. I have no idea, but that's uh, much easier than I thought this matchup would be. But uh, yeah, Val Valkster, again, it's not a good matchup against some decks, but against this mid rows, it's. The mid rows doesn't, is way too slow. And you just. Okay, so that was. um. That was round two of the tournament. Good game to T-Bone, though. He played played good games. I I just don't... I think he had a few unfortunate matches. One is, again, Valkster versus Midros. Valkster wins, in my in my experience. I Just look, analyzing the matchup, I don't really see it. With Brain Nanas, I feel like I can give it an edge, but that just wasn't even close. He also didn't have anything answers to, like, our on turn one, which was sad, you know? Don't forget me, nuts.
And all right, so that'll conclude round two, and I will see you guys in round three. That was fun.